What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Game Day with Trey. Of course, this is your host, Trey, and today we're going to talk about this NBA playoff round two game five matchup between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Boston Celtics. All right, so this game will be played at 7 p.m. East Coast time. The line did open up over under 205 and a half. Boston minus 15 and a half. The line has since moved uh, to over under 204. Boston minus 14 and a half some places, 14 some places. Uh, it depends on where you want to get it. But right now, currently, the line is still moving because everything is locked up on, on what I'm looking at right now on the hard rock. So it will uh, change in a second. We will get the updated lines. But what's been going on uh, in this series between these two teams when you're talking about the Boston Celtics and the Cleveland Cavaliers? All right, so uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers need a win to save that. I mean, like, they, they, they really, really really need a win and after uh, coming out and uh basically sitting your best player due to injury or whatever they they played their best game the other night and really fought you know what i mean but still took a l uh the Cavs are one and four straight up on the road in these nba playoffs guys uh the Cavs are averaging 98.1 points on 44.6 percent shooting and allowing uh, 102.8 points on 44% shooting. Uh, whereas the Celtics look to win this series and go ahead and close out at home. The Celtics are 3-2 and two straight up at home, though, in these playoffs. Uh, because they lost one to, uh, to Cleveland and they lost one to Miami, guys. All right, now uh, the Celtics are averaging 107.6 points on 47.5% shooting and allowing 96.6 points on 44.6% shooting. All right. Uh, so when you look at this series and how these two teams have matched up basically throughout the series, you have to start at game one, guys. And when you start with game one, uh, you kind of got to look at what the what they were scoring all right, per quarter, guys, because uh, it, it it really breaks down like that, especially if you're looking for in-game bets, guys. All right. So the score was 120 to 95 total. Boston slaughtered them. They were giving up 13, okay? In the first quarter, Boston came out and scored 40 points. Cleveland scored 34. Se second quarter, Boston scored 19. Cleveland scored 15. So they locked down on defense, but Boston did cover the first half in that game. Then you got Cleveland coming out scoring 28 points in the third quarter, but once again, Boston came out with them haymakers, 33 points in the third quarter, you know? So uh, at that point, it, was, it felt kind of out of reach, uh, and they just uh, they just put up 18 points in the fourth quarter, where Boston came out and did what they're supposed to do, put up 28 points in that fourth quarter, man. Jalen Brown led the team with 32 points, shooting 12 of 18, only on four three throws, and Donovan Mitchell scored 33 points, shooting 12 for 25 on five free throws. All right, now in that game, uh, Cleveland did shoot 41.1% from the field, whereas Boston shot 48.9% uh, from the field. But Cleveland shot a future 26.2% from three that game, and, and Boston shot 39.1%. Uh, that game was basically won right there, there and in the rebounds. Cleveland got out-rebounded 55-38, to even though they did win the turnover battle 5-9. to Now, in Game 2, Cleveland came back with a haymaker of their own and won 118-94 to in Boston while they were still getting 13 again. <laughs> yeah, crazy. First quarter, Cleveland came out and did what they do. 30 up, Boston didn't show up. They put 24. Then, flip it. Boston scored 30, Cleveland scored 24. So it's tied at the half, all right? So if you had Cleveland with the points at the halftime, you were good. And then 36 points to 24 points, Cleveland scores in the third quarter, 28 to 16 points in the fourth quarter. So Cleveland really much, pretty much just took over in the third quarter when they came out and put that 36 to 24 up. And fourth quarter, they put that lockdown census D and Boston pretty much laid down. Tatum led the team with 25 points in that game, 7 to 17 shooting on 9 or 11 free throws. And Donovan Mitchell, as usual, led the team with 29 points shooting 10 to 19, 4 of 6 from the, uh, from the free throw. Cleveland shot 54.7% from the field. Boston shot 41.3%, but this is where Cleveland won the game. They shot 46.4% from three to Boston's 22.9% from three. We all knew that wasn't going to happen again. Even with Cleveland having 12 turnovers at, to Boston's seven turnovers, what the key was was those threes and the rebounds. The rebounds, 44 to 31 that Cleveland won. Then you go to game three. Clank game three. Cleveland comes out, they get an eight and a half, I want to say, and uh, 
they get demolished, uh, 106 to 93 at home. All right, Boston came out, did what they supposed to do in the first quarter, scored 30 points to Cleveland's 28. Then uh, in the second quarter, in the second quarter, you had uh, Cleveland go ahead and score 20 points to Boston's 27 points, and then in the third quarter, it was 27 points to 21 for Boston once again. So Boston won. Every quarter, except for the fourth quarter in this game, fourth quarter, it was 22 to 24, but it was over by then, guys. Uh, Boston pretty much controlled the game all game long. Boston shot 51.2% from the field, uh, while Cleveland came out shot, shooting 42.9. Uh, the three-point battle was about even, 38.2 to 33. Uh, Boston, once again, 12 turnovers, Cleveland, eight turnovers. Uh, but that 44 to 35 rebound disparity is really what did it, guys. All right, so then when you come to game four, game four, Cleveland came out, fought a little bit better. They was getting the eight and a half. If you had them went to eight and a half all the way down to about seven and a half, you were good uh, because Boston won 109 to 102. Highest scoring game Cleveland had put up against this team uh, minus when they won. But I'm talking about all like all season. They weren't really putting up points against this team like that. You know what I mean? So, uh and nobody was really expecting to see that. They hadn't even scored that many points like that in the series. Uh, I mean, minus the the time when they uh, in the Orlando game in this uh, in this playoff, you know. So uh, anyway, it was one hundred nine to one hundred two. Boston won the first quarter, thirty seven to thirty. Cleveland came back, punched back, won twenty seven to twenty five. Then Boston won the third quarter, twenty six to twenty one, and then Cleveland won the fourth quarter, twenty four twenty one. Kind of a zigzag. About boxing match going back and forth. Cleveland held its own for as long as they could. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they ended up taking that L. And that was without Donovan Mitchell. Uh, that's the game Donovan Mitchell did sit out. Uh, Darius Garland led the team with 30 points, uh, shooting 12 of 27. Uh, he only shot two free throws, though, and that's a problem. You got to get to the free throw line, guys. And then uh, Jason Tatum, he scored 33 points. He got to the free throw line nine times. It was 9-9 nine and nine, and 11-25 to 25 from the field. Boston shot 48.7% from the field, while uh, Cleveland shot 43.6. The three-point battle was even, 37.5 to 31.3 for Cleveland. But Boston, once again, turning the ball over 15 times to Cleveland's eight times did not matter because Boston out-rebounded them 48-32. to 32. All right? So, uh when you're talking about these two teams, man, and how they've played uh, throughout this series, a strained left calf prevented Mitchell from playing on Monday. Uh, and that was Cleveland's actual best game, in my personal opinion, minus the game they won, you know, which is kind of crazy. I definitely did not see that coming. Uh, Bigger staff says uh, they're a connected group that has been resilient all year long. Uh, we've been through a ton of this, a ton with this group, and never once has a group folded when guys had have had opportunities or the team needs them to step up. All right, uh, you know Darius Garland kind of carried them on his back in that last game. He took a lot of pressure off of them offensively, and uh, that's what had to happen. Uh, now, Jason Tatum said, we hung our hat on the on defensive end. Uh, we made timely shots. And even the ones that we didn't necessarily make, some of those kick-out threes, just good execution. Sometimes you don't make shots. But how connected we were on defense on the defensive end when we had to get the stops, we did. You know, uh, Boston attempted 24 free throws in game four. Uh, 17 more than Cleveland, guys. And and that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying you got to get to the free throw line. Like, you can't not you, – if you score all the points, you still – you, you should have got to the free throw line, got the other team in foul trouble. That's why you ended up losing. All right, now the injury report right now for these two teams, Jared Allen is questionable, still dealing with that rib contusion. Uh, Karis LeVert's questionable uh, with a left knee bone bruise, and it's unknown if he will face the Celtics in Game 5. Donovan Mitchell's questionable, dealing with that left calf strain, and it's unknown if he's going to suit up. All right, and remember, he is going to be a free agent. I mean, not free agent, but he's looking to get out of Cleveland after this. And Cleveland possibly could be looking to trade him. So, you know, you got to pay attention to that type of stuff. Porzingis is out for this game still. All right, and then when you come to how these two teams have been uh, doing situationally, okay, so in the last 10 times that these teams have matched up, Boston runs the series 6-4. Straight up. Cleveland does, however, got them 6-4 against the spread. And it's 6 to the over, 4 to the under. This season, they have played each other a total of 7 times now. Out uh, 7 times, Boston got them. Uh, yeah, Boston got them 4. 
no, I'm sorry, five to two straight up. And then uh, when you're looking against the spread, Boston is three and four against them. So Cleveland does have the slight edge this season, four to three uh, against the spread. Uh, but it usually goes Boston, Cleveland, Boston, Cleveland, Boston, Cleveland on how they cover against each other. So in other words, what I'm saying is that it's a time, it's a Boston terms to, to, to cover. But, you know, you got to also take in mind the situation right now. Uh, they don't really have to win by that 14 and a half, uh, or 15, 15 and a half, wherever you got it at. But, uh, at the end of the day, you know, Cleveland, if they don't have the right people out there and they can't score, then they're not going to want to. Win. I mean, it, I'm not going to say they're not going to want to win by that many points, but they're going to go out there and knowing the Celtics mentality, like they're wishy-washy. Like if they're not taking that game seriously for the full game, then Cleveland could do a backdoor cover, guys. Just saying. All right. Because at the end of the day, in this current situation uh, on the season, Boston's seven and two in the playoffs, uh, whereas uh, Cleveland is five and six in the playoffs. So Cleveland, they, I mean, they got a losing record in the playoffs, it's straight up. But when you look at it as a way underdog, they're nine and seventeen straight up on the season. Whereas Boston, we all know they they kill at the house. They forty and six as a home favorite, and they was giving up big spreads like this all season long, guys. All right, and then when you look at it against the spread, all right. Uh, and that's straight up. Now, like I said, against the spread as a home favorite, Boston's 25, 19, and 2. And Cleveland against the spread is 11 and 15 as an away underdog. So once again, like I said, Boston was giving up big spreads like this all season, and they were covering it. You know what I mean? Uh, in the playoffs, Boston 6 and 3 against the spread, whereas Cleveland is still 5 and 6 against the spread. So if they don't win, they don't cover, plain and simple. All right. And then when you look over unders as a home favorite, uh, as a home favorite, the Celtics go 25 to the over and 21 to the under, whereas Cleveland, as a way underdog, goes 11 to the over and 15 to the under, meaning they don't come out themselves and score usually <laughs> in that situation as the way underdog. All right, uh, in the playoffs, five and six, five to the over, six to the under, whereas Boston, they've been playing some pretty decent defense. They're four to the over and five to the under. Uh, in these playoffs, man. Okay, and uh, just situationally, when you're looking at how these two teams have been doing and the stat splits, uh, you got a Boston team in these last three games that's only been scoring 103 points per game while giving up 104.3 points per game. So in these last three games, you know, average scoring margin, even with the two blowouts with, uh, with, within those three games, you still got Cleveland winning the scoring margin by 1.3 points. You know, I mean, which is amazing, you know, to me. But uh, let me show you something real quick on the season, though. Uh, as an away team, Cleveland scores 109.2 points and gives up 109.7 points. Now, that's on all season, including the playoffs. And then Boston, as a home team, they score 121.7 points and give up 107.1, guys. You know, so there's only certain things you, you need to pay attention to so you can understand what exactly these teams do. And I, I like to, to understand what they've done on the whole season. Uh, it just, to me, it, it, it makes sense sometimes because you got to understand how they play in certain situations. Now, at the end of the day, okay, <laughs> the Celtics have won 15 of their last 16 home games against the Central Division opponents. The Cavs have lost 10 of their last 11 road games against teams that held a winning record. The Cavs have failed to cover the spread in seven of their last eight playoff road games. And the Celtics have covered the spread in each of their last six games at TD Garden following a win, guys. All right. So uh, at the end of the day, what am I leaning? I'm leaning Cleveland with that 15, if you can get it still, 15 and a half, maybe 16, some places, if you want to buy a point or two. I just think that there'll be a backdoor cover. I, I, I understand the Celtics are going to win this game. And if you want to, you could actually probably take the Celtics and, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that over on there. 205 and a half is pretty darn low, guys. Uh, even with... Caps at 96 and a half and Boston at 109 and a half for that team total. Uh, could Boston reach that 109 and a half? You know, maybe, 
Maybe they could. But at the end of the day, they've only gone over 109 in this series one time. So, like, it, it's just it's hard to actually say that that's what is going to happen, even if they are at home, guys. Uh, so, like, uh, like I was saying, that 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 uh, over under is pretty low, but I at least would take a peek at it, you guys. But I don't know, y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I hope the video helps you guys. Uh, I know we've been struggling with some of these picks sometimes, but I give you the information so that you can make your own decision. It's not so that you can just follow what I'm doing, even though I'm still hitting. You know, you, you saw on the side, I, I still am hitting. Uh, I, but I'm taking advantage of live in-game bets along with the bets that I'm posting on here and letting y'all know. I, I literally speak my mind to you guys so that you guys can have the information to make a educated decision before you place that bet. But I don't know, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe, man. I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace.